so we are lucky to have Chris Chapman here today with us and I'm going to ask Chris a, a few questions about his research and, and what he thinks. Um, what we're doing this week here is, is talk a lot about accounting research. So I guess the first question is, how do you think accounting research can actually have an impact on society? How can we contribute something that's going to be interesting beyond pure academic research and, and people who are only uh, looking at papers from, from universities in a way? Sure. I think maybe a, that's a big question. Uh, it's a very good question. But if I just give you a hopefully reasonably compact answer, something that actually we're going to talk about in the session after coffee is two broad lines of questioning that academic research can address. Uh, and this is building on Barrel and Morgan's framework of what they would call the sociology of regulation or the sociology of radical change. And so if we take the sociology of regulation for a moment, that's possibly a complicated way of saying things, but if you like, a shorthand would be a lot of accounting research looks at the ways in which the intentions of existing accounting structures can be, if you like, better realized. So, for example, in management accounting, if you have a performance measurement system, agency theory would give you some propositions around how we might expect that performance measurement system would work better. What would be the conditions? What would be the design that would better fit the situation? And so there's just one example of where you might see research that would be about how effectively can accounting structures do their job better. The sociology of radical change is an important aspect for any kind of social science because accounting is not a natural phenomena. And so any system that's set up is, if you like, a value system. And so just as it's important to understand how accounting can be made to work better, it's also important to reflect on what are the ends to which accounting is currently directed. And might there be alternative ends that would be more appropriate or less appropriate? And so in that more challenging sense, rather than making it better, questioning should it be doing what it's doing is also an important part of what accounting research should be doing. And so I think in any kind of social science, it's good to have both sides of that. Hmm. So what type of research do you think we are doing right now in accounting that is actually exciting and that is impacting on, on society or in policy or regulation? I, I think it, there's a lot of different points of impact. And I think if you were to look at the, the kind of archival research, clearly that has impact on what regulators do. It, it feeds into the way uh, both the capital markets are functioning and the way people think about designing and reacting to them. Uh, my own research is more about cost system design in healthcare. Currently, cost systems are a pretty big focus of attention because everyone is worried about rising cost of healthcare across the world. And so understanding the way in which costing systems can contribute to that effectively rather than simply being about reducing cost, but at the expense of clinical procedure, that's an important issue. I mean, I, I could go on. There are, I, w I would like to hope as an optimist at least, many, many ways in which accounting research could be impacting because accounting is so ubiquitous. And what, it's, what kind of steps do you think we as a community, as academics need to take to actually engage in dialogue with, with society? Because I think sometimes we, we fail to do that. I think that's a really good question. Uh, I spent the first half of the morning talking about clarity and precision and the way in which we use vocabularies that are helpful to us in doing our work. And I used, for example, the example of earnings persistence. And so in doing our work, in coming to an understanding, we use, if you like, technical terms and vocabularies that are therefore inaccessible if you don't have a PhD in accounting and haven't spent lots of time. And so I do think that it's important to understand that in a lot of ways our engagement with wider society therefore needs to be done in different ways. I think also maybe there's an overfocus on the individual journal article. Because individual journal articles, if you like, contribute within a wider field of knowledge. But in telling sort of practitioners or other people what might be useful insights, very often that's going to be the result of a stream of research, not an individual paper. And so I think in terms of communicating with the outside world, we need to remember that then we need to speak differently. It, it's less about the technical vocabulary that's necessary to sustain individual articles. And it's about how do I make the kind of Jim Olson point about, well, what's the if you like the common sense version of what's the story here and how is that building on hopefully not just one study but a broad stream of studies. And so I think it's, that is something we need to think about how we do differently. So one last question. And thinking about your own research in, in healthcare and costs, 
something that I know it's it's it's, it's not a fair question, but <laughs> how do you think the, the the crisis, the financial crisis that we're having, is is having an impact on healthcare and how costs are allocated? And and do you think that's something that we as accountants can have a say in in informing governments on how money should be allocated to the healthcare system? I, I think. And, and in terms of my own work, I've really focused on trying to, if you like, spread the word on what are some of the ways in which the design of the costing system limits its capacity to inform useful decisions. And so my framing of the current situation in the UK would be, unfortunately, there is a budget crisis. And so the National Health Service is faced with making very significant cuts in the amount of resourcing it has. The challenge at the moment is that very often the way their costing systems are designed is, if you like, not very detailed. And it doesn't really allow them access to understand, if you like, more local, more process-related decisions. And as a result, the kinds of cost-cutting decisions you tend to see tend to be made at a higher level. So we will close a ward down. We will sack this number of nurses. It's, it's too high level and therefore it's too blunt an instrument. And so one of the things I've been trying to say is not that I think we as accountants know where the resources should be allocated, but I think what hopefully we as accountants should be able to inform on is if you calculated the costs in a more, if you like, granular way, then you would be in a position to hopefully make more informed choices. And I think, you know, ultimately, from my perspective, that involves the doctors. The doctors are not accountants. They shouldn't be accountants, but they probably are the ones who are best placed if the information can be given to them in a way that's accessible and understandable to make these kinds of decisions. Okay, so thank you very much, Chris and Athin. Pleasure to be here, thank you very much.